last time on All for One. First things first, it, it, anytime you, you come back after being gone, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to change gears. Two of the most improved teams in Major League Soccer going head to head. Here is Defoe, can he turn? He's gone down, gets up, Bradley! Drama to the last. But Toronto FC's six match unbeaten run is over. A girl, I believe her name was Maddie, uh, said she hoped to see me at the Sick Kids Prom this year because I was here last year. So I responded and told her to save me a dance. It's been an up and down swing for me this year. The team. It's been really good. Um, you know, we've had our few bad results, but for the most part, we're in it. We're in the playoff picture for sure. <laughs> we saw like a, a golden robot with a little leg. Yeah. A golden robot with a little leg. <laughs> and the egg like is a robot. And it's the because the head looks like an egg. Well, the schedule's been pretty tough lately. We've had a lot of games and, um, you know, the squad's been really tested. So to have a little bit of a, a day off and a little bit of a downtime to yourself and, and, and spe to spend with your family is good. I mean, not, not only physically, but mentally, it can, it can help. Dad, we're going up to see our tower. Better not be. Yeah, we're swimming off. Right. Yeah. What would you be like then? Scared. You know, when things are going well, it's great, but when things are going not so well, it's nice to have, you know, two kids in my in my case who just totally take your mindset away from from football and you know as i said before if it's not going well you know the first time you see the faces it's your mentality switches and and you, you want to give them a, as much quality time as you can Are you scared already? i'm scared so, yeah. wow we keep moving we keep moving oh my god look how high it is oh my god All right, let's do it. Let's go. We're in Scarborough, so this is this is all familiar territory. I mean, I would drive, I would come up and down here with my bike. I would run up and down here. No, no, no personal drivers back then. My feet and my bike, and and, and my dad maybe driving me or, or or one or two other parents. Right here, this corner right here, Warden and Angleton Flea Market. I used to sell mixed. Uh, cassettes back then, obviously cassettes. <laughs> a lot of these people don't what's cassettes. My family, I didn't come from money, so you know, and I didn't like asking for my aunt that raised me at the time. My dad does work like two, three jobs for money, so I, I was very independent as a, as a young age. So I always wanted to find ways to make my own money. Sometimes, you know, not so good means, to be honest. This is it. So I actually grew up in that building right there. You know, so 410, apartment 202. Right here. You know, when I started to, to indulge more in, in, I guess, the Rastafarian faith and, and, and mixing cassettes, I started to look at more progressive ways to make money. And that was through music, really, because we used to DJ, my dad used to collect music. We used to go down to Mellow Music. And, and Eglinton West to get the, uh, the newest records. 
I found an outlet doing that. So me and my friends kind of got together and said, you know, let's, you know, I sell cassettes and they were making ta uh, knitted hats. Cause my friend went to Trinidad and uh, uh, a brother of his passed on the, the, the art of crocheting to him. And we tried to, to, to encourage and inspire the youths in our community to do the same instead of robbing, stealing, selling drugs because we all did that. You don't get a, any greater joy than giving back. Um, to see the smile on the kids' faces and to see the community, the smile of, uh, of the community faces, that it makes it all worth it. And like I said, um, you know, these kids deserve it. Um, I was one of these kids growing up that sometimes felt like there was no out outlets for, for us. Now there's, no, there's not a lot of excuses now. So now they have the outlets and it's important for us to maintain these kids and maintain the, out, um, the programs that, that's getting run here for these kids so they have a bright future ahead. And I have a look. You have a look. I didn't think it was going to be this high, did you, Daddy? I didn't think it would be this high, you know. There's always going to be people who, who knock you, who praise you. I think the older you get, the more you tend not to listen to either side. You, you know, the praise you can take with a pinch of salt. You know, the negativity, you can just let it ride. You know, you can rise above it. Because at the end of the day, you've got your kids to come home to and your family. And regardless of how well or how badly you've played and practiced that day or the game, they don't know. To them, you're just the dad and they want to spend time here, they want to mess around here and it's, um, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. All right, Adrian, at training on Tuesday, we saw Quillen Roberts back from Wilmington, but uh, the big surprise and uh, probably uh, making a lot of people happy, especially himself, uh, being able to take part in full training is bright DK. Hey, it's Rita's birthday, everybody. Rita! Hey, happy birthday, Rita. Thanks, Lizzo. Thanks for telling me. Look at that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know who your true friends are, bro. You gotta, you gotta be getting into this yeah, exactly. You would walk away from me on my birthday. 
crossing the line, man. <laughs> crossing the line. Hello, Canada, and welcome to Kansas City, Kansas. Greg Sutton alongside. We're looking forward to this one because some people are thinking that should TFC make the playoffs for the very first time, this is a playoff preview. Two teams that are among the elite teams in MLS. We're underway in a game that we're looking forward to in a game that Ryan Nelson thinks if they can come away with some points, a win or one point, they may just be able to catch Sporting KC for the conference title. Early flurry by Sporting KC, and now it's settled in now to this little chess game as they try to find the space. It falls for Vail Hover, and he tries to bust through, and they're going to point at the spot. Takes up his place, and high goes Dwyer. 1 0, Sporting KC, goal 15. Slides it through the middle, fail Hopper. And he plays it off the referee. Where does it fall? Dwyer's there. Is he bundled down again? And for a second time in the first 32 minutes, Kansas City with now five. PK goals make it six. Tom Dwyer. Zuzi, Zizo, left foot, lets it go in Italy. Ricochet off Osario and go for another corner. They just don't give up. They just keep coming. Graham Susie getting up was Moore to nod it away. Oh, what a goal! Son Olam. Holland makes the run near post. Little flick. And we're going to see Bright DK. One last cross in. DK gets a touch to it. And there's the whistle. And it is a dominating performance. A dominating win by Sporting KC. No, it just wasn't the kind of game I, we thought we'd get from TFC. Mentioned Gilberto with the four goals. He and Luke Moore with Jermaine Defoe now missing a third straight game. This is a good sign. Well, you mentioned Gilberto's name. He has been on fire for Toronto SC with goals in each of his last three games. Well, you can always take away positives from some of these matches. And one positive for sure is Gilberto still on a roll and scoring another goal in tonight's match. I think it's important to have passion in everything you do. I mean, I'm so lucky. I wake up in the morning and I'm, I'm always happy because I'm doing what I love to do. So I love to play soccer and when I get to the training center, I'm happy and full of passion because I get to play soccer for a living. So I'm very lucky in that sense. And now I'm just Right now, you know, I'm just focused on the work that I need to do. We're working hard to make the playoffs this year and to do well within the playoffs this year. So it's just that passion is what fuels me. It's that competitive nature and, and just working as a team and, and getting to that goal. I love, there's a lot of things I love about the city. Um, I love the restaurants in the city. It's a great place to live. It's very secure, it's very safe and, and relaxed, this city. Um, as I spend more and more time in the city, then I learn to love a lot of the other, a lot of the other cultural aspects that the city has to offer. So there's a lot of things that I love about the city. I, am, I get a lot of support from uh, my translator, Danny. He's a great guy. We get along uh, really well and he helps me a lot. When I don't know some words, he'll say, uh, Danny, uh, help me, what, what is this? 
and uh, he's been uh, a good help for me throughout the season so far. Now, question, um, the work that he's had done, is there, are there any issues with it? Or is there a door do the trabalho que eles fizeram as duas semanas atrás? No. It's perfect? Good. My smile's gonna get better. Welcome home, say the Toronto FC fans, and welcome back, says Ryan Nelson and the rest of the teammates as Toronto looks to win its 10th game of the season. This is their 23rd game of the season for Ryan Nelson, coaching in his 57th MLS game with a record of 15 wins, 24 losses, and 17 ties. Now Jonathan Osorio with a nice ball underneath Palmer. Here's Morrow with a lovely cross into the box and an own goal! It's in the back of the net behind Sean Johnson in just the third minute. And Toronto FC have a one to nothing lead. Jonathan Osorio now for Defoe with his back to goal. Now Defoe to the 18. Along the top of the box, Dominic Oduro in the area. Bradley comes to meet the pass, no shot. Mark Bloom tries to get a handle on it and he can't. Joe Bendick yet to put this ball back into play. And as soon as he does, the referee's gonna blow the whistle on the happenings of the first half. He's got to lift the intensity yeah, in the second half. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm defensive end, especially Go to him on the kicks, because he's an idiot. He will flick it onto his own goalkeeper. Well, I don't know how many expected Robert Hershaw to come back to Major League Soccer, let alone his first game back being here at BMO Field. It's a polite round of applause for the fans here. Curled in, Hershaw! Ties the game! 70th minute and Robert Earnshaw just moments coming into this match as a substitute in the second half levels it back in MLS. And here he goes, Gilberto into the box and can't get to the ball. Dominic Oduro sends it back across and it's cut off in the corner of the six before it can get into the danger area. Gilberto had so much in that tank of his, he just keeps on Motoring up top. For me, it's a love, it's a passion. Um, when I'm not playing soccer, I'm, I'm watching it on TV. So it's it's a huge passion for me. For me, it was love at first sight. When they when they gave me the ball the first time, I just I knew what to do with it. I started playing, and you know it hasn't it hasn't stopped from there. But the love affair has continued to grow. Steps up. Now Gilberto's in behind the defense. Gilberto on a breakaway. Gilberto rounds the keeper and he scores! 79th minute magic again from Gilberto. I still have a lot of desire to, to play. I still have a lot of um, desire to score more goals. Be, I, have, I have a lot to prove still too, a lot of work to do, but I have a huge desire to, to be a champion, to win games, and to uh, help Toronto win the MLS Cup. And we talk about Jermaine Defoe and him only needing one chance. Gilberto, who now has goals in four consecutive games, is in that same mindset. And Toronto now not afraid to slow things down with just about five minutes or so in stoppage time here. Near post! Oh my goodness, a rocket to the top of the net! And we are level of two apiece. So first off, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I know it's a it's a holiday weekend, and we have a lot of places we'd rather be. So appreciate everyone's time here. You know, and it's something that I wanted to, to, to you know, was hoping to, to hold off for a couple more days, but given the result last night and, and the way that we played, we're here to, uh, to announce a, a decision to change coaches. For this man, head coach Ryan Nelson, perhaps seeing red too many times at home, his team with only one win in their last five games at home. Warner in the middle, and there's the first turnover by Toronto. 
And here's Lee Wynn with a chance, and he's got the game's first goal in the second minute of this match. Bradley Orr hasn't started in a while. Turns it over. Here's Rowe. Bradley almost brought him down. Rowe from distance! 21st minute, and New England is up 2-0. From 30 yards, maybe 28. Davies to the goal. Out comes Bendick, wide open goal for Teal Bunbury. It's 3-0 New England. You can see the head scratching going on now with the Toronto coaching staff as they try to figure out what on earth is happening in their club that is just unraveling here. Trying to change the tone of the match and a lot of frustration on the faces of the Toronto FC players right now. And Toronto FC to a chorus of very unhappy fans fall 3-0. This game was over. Let's be honest. Based on what we saw the rest of the night after that goal scored in the second minute, Toronto never did get on the rail. Let me provide a little bit of color for, for why this decision was made. Um, you know, we're in a results-oriented business and uh, over the past 13 matches we've won three games. But more importantly for our fans uh, in Toronto, we've won one game in the past six matches. And um, you know, thinking about our locker room and knowing our guys, I know we can, I know we can get 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 more out of this group of guys. We have some really great characters. We have some leaders. We have uh, exceptional talent um, internationally uh, through MLS experience as well as you know TFC and some local Canadian homegrown talent. So I'm really excited about the direction we can go um, under Greg's helm and with the players uh, that we have in the locker room right now. Um, I, I couldn't be more, um, I guess, I guess excited about the plan and purpose that Greg has for our players. I think, you know, in some sense we've lacked a bit of purpose, um, both, you know, offensively and defensively, and I think that's something that Greg can provide. I've known Tim Mywicki and, and played under his, his clubs for a long time, so I think he knew who I was, uh, and he knew knew me, um, and what I sort of stood for, and what I was about in terms of the game. Um, and so that, and that's where it's been. I mean, uh, uh, and then I got here, and then we've been all working together to, to try to drive the club forward. General Manager Tim Bezbachenko has relieved head coach Ryan Nelson and his staff of their duties. Bezbachenko says that this is a results-driven business and the product simply wasn't there from his coaching staff. He, however, was adamant to point out that he does believe in this roster and therefore has appointed Greg Vanny to step in and inject some life into this club. On the next All for One. Uh, I wanted to start the meeting and just say to you guys uh, that I appreciate over the last couple of days, I know how the, the last couple of days have been uh, a whirlwind for everybody, uh, emotionally, and I appreciate uh, more than you know the professionalism, the effort, uh, everything that you guys have put it in the last couple of days. I couldn't have asked for anything more, and I appreciate that from, from the bottom of my heart. It's been uh, it's been a wild couple of days, and I know you guys know that and have felt that as well. So I appreciate that of you guys. That was. Uh, Hey, don't get frustrated. Keep working. Our time is now. Okay, let's get back to the